Ariel Hawani in Houston gearing up for UFC 136 alongside Chael Sonnen who meets Brian Stan this Saturday night live on pay-per-view and Chael I have to say sincerely it is good to see you back it's fight week and, and it's been a while obviously so just want to throw that out there it's good to see you again I appreciate that buddy it's 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 good to see you as well it's good to good to be back getting in the flow of things what is it like getting in the flow of things you've had to sit on the sidelines for a long time is it fun for you to be back out here again yeah I mean I, you know, I don't know if fun is the word I would use it's uh uh, it's what I'm used to. You know, this isn't a fun sport. If someone wants to have fun, I wouldn't recommend they get into MMA. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean, this is the process. This is this is what I do. So it's um, it's good to be back. Do you believe in, in the theory of ring rust? And if so, do you think it will, it will affect you on Saturday? Uh, yeah. I mean, I tend to believe in it. I don't know. I've never been in this spot. I've just seen other guys do it, and it, it seems to affect everybody. Um, you know, you got to understand. When I left, I was the best by a lot. The, the next closest guy wasn't even close. I was 300 punches better than the next closest guy. So if I'm worse now and I'm only 290 punches better than the competition, I'm still on top. Not that bad. It's not that bad. Now, I, I'm just wondering, obviously, it, it's been a while since we've seen you. Are you a different Chael Sonnen? Have you worked on anything that, you know, I saw you working on some spinning back kicks in the, in the cage and whatnot. Have you added any tools to your arsenal since you've, you've last fought? No, I try to. I mean, I, I try to for every fight. Uh, you know, always the skill building. There's, there's no spot in the octagon I'm comfortable. There's no spot where I think, okay, we got that covered, let's move on. Um, so I try to get better everywhere. And, uh, you know, from the techniques you just mentioned to, you know, stuff on the ground, conditioning, strength, you know, whatever it is, always working hard. And, uh, again, you know, I don't, I don't want to just be the best. I want to be extremely dominant. I want to, to really expand that gap. So, you know, you take risks. Sometimes you, you learn new techniques, and uh, in the process you forget the old ones. So it's a, it is a risk when you work with new coaches and uh, go to new gyms and stuff. But, uh, you know, it's part of the process of continuing to try to get better. You have talked about uh, switching things up from a camp perspective. Why did you decide to do this? Well, I just kind of needed a little bit of a change, um, a little closer to my house, uh, driving-wise. Uh, for 10 years, I've been to the same gym, twice a day, every day, you know, the same drive, the same smells, the same sights, and uh, just try to kind of get a little bit of a change, maybe just um, uh, uh, more mentally than physically, just kind of mentally uh, switch things up a little bit and uh, maybe take in a new, a new venue for a little bit, see some, see some different sights. There has been a lot of talk, and I think you've heard some of this, that we're seeing a kinder, a gentler Chael Sonnen. What do you make of all that? It's almost like, to me, it reminds me of that scene from Goodfellas when people were telling, you know, Joe Pesci was like, what am I, a clown? Am I here to music? Sure. It's like yeah. people are almost expecting, yeah. you know, material out of you. Yeah. What do you think of that pressure? Well, you know, look, I, I, I don't think a whole lot about it. You know, I don't know what you're going to ask me, but when you ask it, I try to answer it to the best of my ability, you know, and I, I don't make things up. If I, if I didn't mean it, I wouldn't say it. And uh, I've never apologized for anything I've ever said. And at the same time, uh, I'm just not going to make something up against about this next opponent. I like him. I've liked other opponents. And uh, we're going to go out and take care of business anyway. When we talked to you in July, he was not on your mind. I mean, I, I even remember at 132, I think you took a picture with him. You guys were, were friendly. So were you disappointed when they offered you, Brian? Because it seems to me like you sort of fuel off that sort of grudge against another guy that you're about to fight. Yeah, you know, I, yeah, when his name came out of the hat, you know, if they would have said, hey, who's, who's the one guy you don't want to fight, you know, his name would have been in there. Uh, Chris Lieb and Ed Herman, you know, my, my teammates and, and brothers, I wouldn't, of course, want to fight them. But, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, nobody wants to fight Stan. You know, he, he really is a, a nice human being, and he's also a very vicious competitor. So now you've got a guy that knows how to compete, and uh, there's no resentment going in. You know, you kind of got a couple things to deal with, his abilities and then your own going, oh, man, I really think this is a swell guy. So, uh, you know, it's the way it goes. It's, it's just the way it goes. Do you think Brian Stan is as good as, you know, the, the Andersons, the, the, the Nate Marquardt, some of the guys you fought recently? Do you think he's as good as them at 185? Well, you know, I'll have to let you know. I, all I know is what I've seen of him on film. You know, he, he beat some guys faster than I could beat those guys. Um, I fought Chris Lieben plenty of times, and I've never knocked him down once. Uh, he knocked him down a few times all in the same round. So that means something to me. You know, I watch that and go, wow, that was... That was impressive. So, I don't know. I, I, I'm confident that he's very good, um, but I've got my skills too, and uh, and I'll bring them. 
and um, you know. One thing you can count on is I will not back down. I will not lay down for anybody. And uh, if he wants me down, he's going to have to keep knocking me down. And if he can do it and he can win this fight, then God bless him. He deserves it. And, and the last time he fought a wrestler like yourself was Phil Davis. It was at 205, but same skill set. Have you watched that fight? And are you going to try to replicate the, the, the sort of weaknesses that, that Phil Davis exposed when they fought? Well, you know, I'll go out there and compete. Um, and... You know, if I can get him down, fine. But then, what am I going to do with him when I get there? You know, it's there, there's a lot more to it than than just the wrestling. Uh, so I haven't thought about it a whole lot. That's that's a good fight and a good, good comparison you just made. I hadn't thought about that a lot. Uh, I did see the fight. I was on the card with them. I fought uh, Nate Marquardt that night, so I saw the fight. And uh, I don't really remember. Maybe I have to go back and look at that. You should. You know, next couple of days or so. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Dana was non-committal when when we asked him if the winner of this fight is going to fight for for the title. Um, What's your take? I mean, if you beat Brian Stan, do you think you deserve another shot at Anderson? Well, I, I don't deserve anything. Look, uh, this is a number one contender fight. Whoever wins this fight is fighting for the title. Um, Says who, though? Th they can do whatever they want. You know, if they, if they want to switch that or they see a better fight, um, they're the experts on that topic. You know, I, I, I got a different job. I walk to the ring with short pants and a mouthpiece, and I put my hands up and fight. And, uh, you know, if the, if, if the guys that know better think... There's another fight. I'm not here to get in the way, but uh, whoever wins this fight is going to fight for the belt. All right, Chad. Well, good luck to you. Great to have you back, and uh, we look forward to this fight on Saturday night. I appreciate it. Thank you.